How long does it take for a PhD to find a job? It took eight months for this engineering PhD to land a job in the industry. It is not even an academic job. Zero offer from the academia. Hello, my science friends. Welcome to my weekly recap of science internet. I saw this post in the subreddit LabRat, which is a community of biomedical researchers. The OP of the post, Stay Sharp 87 posted his data of the job hunt. After eight months of agonizing in job search, I finally have an offer. They have a PhD in drug engineering. Still, it took him eight months of agonizing search. So it's really tough out there. That is why I think we should take a look at it and really see the reality of having a science career. I'm a scientific illustrator. I help scientists to visualize their research. And this post is somewhat related to my profession because OP visualized his job search data in a very clear way. Let's have a look at his graph. Initially, I wanted to become a professor and I thought I had a pretty decent chance, especially since both my PhD advisor and postdocs advisors told me so. So I became extremely anxious and depressed when the reality of me not being able to get a faculty position it is very difficult to become a professor i read that the chance is one percent it is not as easy as many people in academia portrayed watch out and manage your expectation always have a plan b for alternative careers i started applying for industry jobs and about a month later i finally got an offer currently they try seven months for academic positions and no result when they started applying for industry job, they got an offer within a month. Let's take a look at their graph. In total, they send out 163 applications. And 113 applications were academic positions and 50 were in industry. Over two thirds is an academic job. Most of the applications were ghosted. That means there's no reply from the hiring manager at all. Nothing like being ghosted after an interview, so rude. Ghosting is very common in job applications. It happens to both academia and industry. A lot of people take this personally, but the staff members are most likely overwhelmed. It is very difficult to reply personalized messages. I know a lot of people cannot stand ghosting. They take ghosting as as an offense, but it is actually not. They are not doing this personally to you. This might sound very cold, but this is the real world, everybody. Out of all the academic positions, they received 23 rejections from the academic job and was invited to one Zoom interview and then no response. This is also ghosting. Well, this one is ruder because you already talked to the person. You're pretty sure that they already have narrowed down to a few candidates, but in the end, you still get ghosted mean that the PI is overwhelmed with work or PI has a fear of rejecting people because a lot of people actually are not very good at giving people bad news. They will just outright avoid it. I'm someone who loves to give people bad news so maybe they should outsource this job to me. If you apply for a big corporation with a large HR department, there will be a person whose job is sending out rejection letters. It is a full-time job. In the end, they got zero offer from academic positions. OP panicked and started to apply for industry jobs. He sent out in total 50 applications, getting ghosted with more than half, 16 rejected, and got two interview invitations, three rounds of interview. That is so exhausting. Offer from both. Congratulations, it's, that's very amazing. Accepted one and declined another. With this data, we can calculate what is the likelihood of getting a job. Let me get my calculator. Two divided by 163. That would be about 1.2% of the chance that you will get a job. It is very low. That's the reality of job hunting as a PhD in science. It is not easy. This is why I want to talk about this with you guys. We really need to have a reality check how difficult it is to get a job even if you have a PhD with postdoc experience. They have a background in drug delivery. They are a postdoc right now. They have published three papers with impact factor over 10. That is very impressive. They got their PhD in one of the top 20 universities in the US and they're doing postdoc in one of the top three. So even though they have a stellar resume, it still took them eight months to land a job. It is very tough. This is something I wish I knew when I was still at school because I was very naive about the challenges ahead 
head. I suffer a lot after graduation. My experience is very similar to the OP. Let's take a look at the salary. It's between 120,000 to 150,000 base in California. This might seem a lot to people outside of the US, but in California, I guess middle class income. And after 50% of taxes, they can only get about 60K back. So this is what you can get after having a PhD. They did say that this salary is twice as much as the pay in the academia. Nice, reality check. Scientists are not rich. I don't think people really become aware of how unrich scientists are because they have the prestige. You know, the title looks fancy, but the pay is very much like a middle-class income, which is not bad. If you're financially responsible, you can get by. But if you want a really big house, it will be difficult. Let's have a look at the comments. These are where the fun is. Even though industry makes up 30% of your application, it provides 100% of your offer. Exactly. Faculty and position are truly impossible to crack at this point. 100% <laughs> with this data. Postgrad students are sold a lie if you're looking to get a faculty position. Chances are very slim, almost on the level of succeeding as a professional sports player. That is very true. Honestly, for many international students, it is a call to a green card. Oh, it could be. Okay, speaking from someone in academia, industry job way better than professors. I know a lot of people are stressed and bitter in academia. I mean, industry jobs indeed get paid more, but then you need to play the corporate game, but you also need to play the office politics in academia. Either way, you're going to be miserable. So just to choose your poison. Okay, better pay, working condition, they aren't saying it to be nice. Dreams of professorship, which is often pay scale wise and better than industry, are sold to keep postdocs being underpaid and propping up the flawed industry. Be careful when you speak facts. <laughs> I come from a very academic family, so that's all they know. I've been brainwashed by this idea of going into professorship throughout my youth. I really rebel against that. Now I'm someone on the internet trying to sell drawings. I don't know whether that's better or worse. I do enjoy YouTube though. I think people should keep their options open acquire more skills that is transferable to different industry. This is not only applied to academia, even if you work in the industry, it is wiser to have multiple skills that, that can help you to get a new job immediately and get out of the bad situation. There are a lot of shit that can happen throughout your career. Horrible colleagues, horrible manager, or losing passion about what you do. It can help you to get a new job immediately and get out of the bad situation. So always keep an open mind, always keep your options open. And don't fixate too much on only trying to make it in academia. I've been in industry for more than a decade now, thankfully never in the layoff from a job, but it does happen to a lot even more stable companies. So most places it has a two to three year cycle of slow expansion followed by hiring freeze and layoff. That's true, just keep your eyes open. Whenever you see the sign of layoff is happening, find a new job. Industry job does have layoffs, but also academia, but it comes in a different form. The equivalent of layoff in academia is running out of budget. If there's no grant to support a PhD or postdoc, then they have to leave. Academic job is not stabler than industry job. And don't ever think like this will not happen to me. Layoff can happen to anyone. Can you give some tip of how to skip academia? I think the common means leaving academia. Exactly. I don't know what you mean by skip academia. I very well went through all the academic has to offer from the bachelor to postdoc. They gave some really good resume preparation advice. So you guys can take a look at the comment. I'm not going into detail here. Had a similar experience. Only one of my mate is still grinding through the rest of us are in industry. Exactly, look at that. A tiny percentage of get to professor, the rest are lab monkeys and grant grabbers. This is the reality, guys. Pay attention to this. Make good plans for yourself. Don't fixate on academia. I cannot stress this enough. What is your own experience? Let me know in the comments. 
if you want to further have a chat with it, you can join my Discord, DM me on social media, or come to my live stream on Wednesdays. I appreciate you guys spending time with me on this channel, and I'll see you again next week.